Seminar TV. Today, my guests are five beautiful African queens, which were born in, some are born here, and some are in Africa and Jamaica. They are going to talk, I'm going to talk to them about their lives, their experiences in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. So, my first African queen that she's going to introduce herself is Madam, please. Hi guys, my name is Brittany. Um, I was born in Jamaica. I moved here around the age of three or four, I believe, and I'm 19. <laughs> there you go. I'm 19, turning 20 soon. And the next guest is... Yanda. I was born in England. It's not very interesting, I know, but you know. No, it's interesting. Okay, it's it's not very interesting. interesting. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Yaley, and I was born in the UK, but I'm from Tanzania, and I am 18 years old. Hi, my name is Nafi, and I'm born in Gambia, and I moved here when I was 10, and I'm 20 years old. Hi, my name is Mame. Hi, my name is Mame. I'm 19 years old. I'm from. I was born in Germany, but I'm Ghanaian. That is beautiful. I have here five beautiful African queens. And today, our topics, a topic that we are going to talk about is about Africa, how Africans feel in Europe. They were all born in different places, but they all grown up here in UK. So first, I'm going to ask you my queen, <laughs> Brittany. Do you consider yourself as an European? No. Or? No, um, I consider myself Jamaican. So when, whenever I um, think of like where I'm born and like, um, like my culture, I always tend to divert to Jamaica. Um, even though I grew up in Europe and in England for like most of my life, I, like because my household, the way I was grown, like where I was brought up, my mom always said, out there, out there is England, in this house is Jamaica. So um, I'm just so used to that mentality. So I don't consider myself British per se, even though I do have a British passport. It's a bit confusing, but. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. Mm. And the same question goes to Munda. Um, I consider myself as African as well. Yeah, I was born here, but Africa is like Africa is my home, especially Gambia. Like I love it. It's my close up West Africa. Oh, have you been there before? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was really young, so I don't remember anything. But I like I want to go there. Like after pay sixteen, I want to go there for a year. You know, mm -hmm. just to relax, have fun. You can't have fun in this country, not. Oh, that's, that's don't say, don't say, but um, yeah, you can't really. It's just it's so stressful. It is stressful. I believe you. It is stressful. So, Madam Yeli, if yeah. I forget. Yeah. Um, I consider myself to be African as like at home. I always speak my home language Swahili, and um, always eat African foods and stuff. Okay. Yeah, and I just I don't know. I just love Africa and. Yeah. Have you been there before? Yeah, um, before COVID, we go like every year. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I have like loads of family there. Lucky you. That's good. Lucky you. That's Lucky good. You. That is good. So, um, you speak Swahili. Yeah. Can I ask you one of the questions? Akuna Matata. No worries, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's 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 it. That's it. Um, Madam Nafi. Um, I definitely consider myself Gambian because I was basically raised there and spent most of my primary school days there. So okay. I definitely consider myself more African. So more African than European. Yeah. So basically we have all Africans. And <laughs> Madam <laughs> Queen <laughs> Mami. <laughs> Um, so, can you please repeat the question? <laughs> Do you consider yourself an African or European? Um, I consider myself African as at home I've always, my mum has always, my parents have always spoken the Ghana language to me. It's never English or anything else, it's always the Ghana language. I've always eaten the food. I just love the culture. So yeah, I'm African. Which food do you like? <laughs> um, my favourite, 
as you probably know, is Fufu. Fufu? Mm -hmm. Oh, that is good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. And I mean, thank you for honoring this my invitation. I'm very pleased to have you girls. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. You for having us. Um, the next question that I'm going to ask is, is about, what do you think about Africa, um, Mundo? Come to your face. What do you think about Africa? As it's a beautiful continent. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, <laughs> media kind of portray it as somewhere that's just so poor mm -hmm. and everyone's just all hungry and stuff, which is just ridiculous mm -hmm. because most people here is just, ugh, everyone's always complaining here, but in Africa, everyone's just so happy and they're always laughing and stuff like that. There's no stress and it's just, you know, it's lovely. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, so you haven't been there, you, you've been there when you were a child. Yeah. And how do you know that people are happy over there or... Because I have loads of family members there and I talk to them all the time. And they just, they're all just, you know, very lively. Like even if you just talk to them, you're just happy because they give you that vibe, you know. Um, and um, my mom always like tell me loads of story about them and stuff like that and how she never worries, she, she never worried about anything. And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> At her age, she never worried about school or what's happening around the world and stuff like that. She was just quite free, which I wish I can like. I wish I was the same. I wish I'm the same, but you know, it's just a lot. That is so, very nice. Yeah. Madame Yeli. Yeah. Um, what do you think about Africa? Well, it's very peaceful and everyone embraces their culture and stuff. And obviously, before it was colonized, like Africa was like full of riches and obviously we had kings and queens and all of that. And even though we've moved on from that, it just shows how like kind our people are because I don't know, like they accept everyone and everything and obviously there's loads of like tourism and stuff and they don't have like hate in their heart and stuff. Whereas in Europe we still have like um I still sometimes experience racism and stuff. But not from everybody. But when you go to Africa like no one's like that. Because the Africans even welcome the Europeans that comes. Yeah. In Africa, there's no racism. There isn't, yeah. But in here, there is racism. So, um, Brittany, mm. we don't know much about Jamaica. Mm. We know that there's it's Africans that mm. settled there during those days. Mm. Do you go there very often? I wish, um, but I don't because um, it's quite expensive to go, mm -hmm. number one. And so I think I've been there about three times I think when when I first came here um, well I was born there came here then I visited when I was about 10 and then I visited again later on I, my mom probably will correct me on this but yeah so um, it's been a while since I've gone um, and I miss it but um, and like my family was there but a lot of them has migrated out because um, seeking better opportunities in life but the thing about Jamaica like your heart will always be there because it's so rich in culture so rich in like um you've got dance hall we've got all kinds of music you've got reggae you've got ska you've got the vibes the vibes are a whole different level <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah yeah the vibes are on a different level so it's um and i think that's the thing um wherever africans go we always have we're so rich in happiness so rich mm. in life i feel like we appreciate life because the way where we appreciate our roots and that kind of thing and I think that's what makes us so proud of who we are mm -hmm. we're very proud because like our parents have brought us up that way like we call each other queens or like sis or brother or uncle because we see each other as family yes. even if I'm from Jamaica and then she's from Gami and it doesn't matter because we all see each other as one family and I think mm -hmm. that's what I love the most about being black I think and um being like heritage from Africa so mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you believe that um, Africans, mm. wherever we travel to or whatever happens to, wherever we go, even if we go with empty handed, mm. we make something out of, of that course. place? Of course, yeah, because I feel like even the um, Africans that came to Britain, when you look at London, most of the slang is Jamaican slang. Yeah. 
like bruv, wagwan, like all of it, Jamaican slang. And because we have so many Jamaicans in London, that means you got loads of our food is in London and all that kind of, So it's like, we could go empty handed. We could have nothing. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's a part of us. Our culture is part of us. So wherever we go, we end up sharing it a lot. So, um, and, and loads of people appreciate it, love it, love our culture, love our hair, love our, like, so that's the thing, it's, I, I don't know, everyone loves mm, it. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So, Miss Nafi, Queen Nafi, should I, is that, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, I see young ladies like you being here, still think back home, mm. even though some are born here, some of you were born back home, but you came here at young age. So that means um, you don't have much memories over there, but you still keep your culture. I mean, we also give thanks to your parents, though, because they've done well. They keep you into that level. So what do you think about Africa? Um, you being born then do most of your primary yeah. school. I think most of them here, you are the one that grown up a bit in Africa before coming here. Yeah. Tell me much. Um, for me, being in Gambia and being here, I like see a lot of difference from the beginning because in Gambia, it's like, as a child, like you're really free. There's things that you do there that you wouldn't do here and you just have more freedom. And I feel like that kind of enables you to be more mature. Because I feel like when you're in Africa, they give you that freedom and it's safe because the environment is safe, so you're able to have that freedom. Whereas here, they kind of tell you like stranger danger, like to be careful who you talk to. But in Africa, in, especially in Gambia, because it's such a small community, mm -hmm. everyone knows everyone, like your neighbors yeah. in society, and the like your parents, they trust you that, okay, I was 10, but mm -hmm. I was trusted to go out to school by myself, to take my cousins to school. This is what I wanted to yeah. ask, but you answered it already. Because mm -hmm. we have that openness in the community and everyone knows each other. So you, my grandma's friends will be like, oh, I saw Nafi going to school today. And you know, it's safe. It's safe. So yeah. it's a different environment. So when I came here, I definitely noticed those little things. Because mm -hmm. here, like, even though I was 10, my mom was still taking me to school, whereas there, I was going by myself. So it's different, quite different. And I think even in a certain age, not even 10, even here, if you are sometimes even um, 12, 13, 14, mm -hmm. in some areas, your parents have to take you to school. Yeah. Because the route that you take to school are dangerous because there's a lot of dangerous people out there mm. that, I mean, a lot of, I think uh, that was when, um, I think on the 20th or something like this, there's a news going around, there's a lady, uh, a young girl, 12 year old girl, 11 old year girl has gone mixing in Croydon. Mm. You see, a girl, they saw her, according to, they said they, they saw her around 8 o'clock. That means the time she left home. That's it. Till now, they haven't found her. I think she's a Ghanaian, something because the name sound Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. So that makes it a bit scary for, for we that comes from other place to this place. Mm -hmm. But it's still the same. We are survivors. Definitely. We will still survive. Mm -hmm. So, Mami, what do you think about Africa? Um, I really like Africa. I think the culture is great. I think living in the UK is... I, I never lived in Africa. I never lived in Ghana. I visited, I visited there once um, when I was around 9 or 10. But I did really enjoy it. It was always hot. Always hot. Mm. Always hot. And I do see there is a lot of difference i feel like the people in africa have genuine hearts and genuine love for everybody in their community whereas in the uk i can't say the same i feel like you could walk down the street in the uk and people would be giving you looks dirty looks and everything but if you walk down the street in africa in ghana specifically everyone's smiling at you saying i like your clothes all of this they're all so friendly and so nice over there thank you guys Keep watching Kwamina TV. Subscribe, like, leave comments. If anything, then we know what is good. Um, Yeli. Yeah.
Um, the next question goes to you. What is some of the challenges that you've been facing in this part of the world? I mean, school, work, or which challenges that you've been facing? Have you faced um, before? Or? Yeah, definitely. So I remember in primary school, like, because um, at first, at first I learned Swahili, mm. and then obviously when I like started going to school, I struggled mm -hmm. because you know when they start introducing reading and writing and stuff, and I yeah. even had to have like personal assistance and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because so of the language. Yeah, and okay. I remember I had an accent, mm -hmm. so like kids were like laughing and stuff, and I always used to have my natural hair. And like they were like, oh, they've never seen it before. Like they didn't know how to react. You know, when people see something's different, like they're threatened. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was definitely challenging as well. And like there wasn't much rep representation on TV and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like when you watch Disney, you don't really see that many like um, brown people. So I didn't have like that many role models. Mm -hmm. And like I kind of wanted to be white because that's all I knew. But now obviously I'm more grown up and stuff. And I love my culture and I love being black. Black. Yeah. That is great. That is great. Yeah. So, Queen Munda. <laughs> um, the challenges I faced was, well, my complexion. Um, Colour, you mean? Yeah, complexion. Color. Yeah. Um, because I used, well, some people used to tease me because of my dark skin. Um, yeah, it was a bit painful at first, but then I like slowly realised that sometimes when people are oppressed, they feel like the only way they can feel better is by oppressing others. Oppressing others, yeah. Yeah, and... Put their stress in you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it did reduce my self-confidence, and sometimes I feel like, oh, if I was just a little bit lighter, you know, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to look beautiful. Yeah. But you are, you are very beautiful. Thank you. You are very black and beautiful. That's why I said you guys are African queens. You are the future of Africa. Yeah, but then you just have to realise, mm -hmm. like, you are beautiful, like no matter what complexion you are. Um, when I look, like before when I look on like TV and all this stuff, they always like celebrate one type of beauty. It's like, because the European beauty standard, it's like if you're light skin or you have a curly, loose texture hair and all this stuff. But then now that they're bringing it more out and people are like accepting like themselves, it's just, yeah. It's different, so you know. And I think just to add to that, yeah, yeah, I just think um, as a, a woman, like or a girl or anything like that, like you already have the pressure of like um, being perfect as a girl. Mm -hmm. Like you have to have the perfect body, and like they people change their mind as to what the perfect body is all the time. It used to be like like really thin, really like modelesque and like elegant. Mm -hmm. And then they changed yeah, to be like a plus size woman. And stuff yeah. Like and then and then they changed to be this hourglass skin cake. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like so as a girl, you feel I feel like we have a lot more pressure. So yeah. as a black woman, like in um like a predominantly white society, it makes it even harder. Exactly. Like because we haven't got the facial features that they want. Yeah. They haven't got the complexion that they want. Exactly. Like like when we were younger, the whole you have that yeah. are all white yeah. and stuff like that. You have that straight hair mm -hmm. and stuff. And then I it's hear. hard. It's hard. Yeah. And then like the babies that you play with, the usual They're usually white. white. Mm -hmm. And like um, when we were younger, the whole beauty standard was you need to be thin. Mm -hmm. My legs are like they're thick. Okay, they I've, <laughs> I've got thighs. What can I do about that? Mm -hmm. So, um, but I used to look at them and be like, why isn't it like my white counterparts? Because like all my friends were white because they, um, I was one of the few black girls in my class in my primary school all throughout and subconsciously exactly. they don't have to say it's up anything sometimes but and subconsciously yeah, it has gotten so yeah. big that's not in africa you see bleaching cream everywhere yes. like, oh. it's so popular in africa that's crazy yeah. and the thing is they put so many chemicals in it mm -hmm. and your skin will be burning off and you still have put it on because you want to look mm -hmm. like the white woman but now the white woman is tanning and the lips, my woman is your body connections, everything. So it's like, I don't know. Okay. it's confusing. It's confusing. Right. <laughs> um, Nafi, which challenges um, have you been facing? For me, it was like what Yeri said the accent, because I was born there. So when I came, I had like a proper Gambian accent. Mm -hmm. And also having to learn English, kind of like 
fresh from the start was kind of challenging. Um, And I think it's because obviously I had an African accent and the kids had like a British accent. That was quite different for me personally, especially when it comes to socialising with them. And obviously they find it strange. So they do talk about it and mention it to me like, oh, you sound, you know, different. But yeah, um, it was a bit tough for a moment, but then I kind of just stood up for myself and I was like, yeah, I have an accent. Like, there's nothing I can change about it or do about it. But now that accent is gone and it's a bit fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, if I to have it back, I would, honestly. But yeah, it was a bit hard at first, but you get over it. And I feel like you just have to kind of stand up for yourself and not feel embarrassed because of it, because that's who you yeah, yeah. are and where you're from. So you should never be ashamed of that. Do you have to, I mean, fight anyone or something like this during that time? Uh, I had a lot of fights. <laughs> I got into a lot of fights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How many is that thing? How many? We don't have to say I mean, that. Yeah. Because, of your, because of your accent? Yeah, because of my accent. So I did get into a fight mm-hmm. because of it. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's good. I mean, you fight for your rights mm-hmm. you, you, because um, you were not meant to be born black or white or have different accent. It's just like we come from different places. Yeah, exactly. And different places has different languages. Mm-hmm. This is how God make it. Mm-hmm. We didn't do it. So if you come from Africa like me, I still have my Ghanaian accent. Mm-hmm. You see, I've been in Europe for a long time, but still Ghanaian. Mm-hmm. I can't change the accent. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... Mommy, <laughs> tell me something. Um, the challenges I've been facing. I can't really say that I've faced that many challenges just because... But, uh, so I you was, were born in Germany. Yes. And? Um, just uh, I was born in Germany, which... Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember a lot about Germany because I did come to the UK when I was very do you young. Sp- do you still speak German? A little, a little. I can do it. What can you do it now? Um... <laughs> Um, the pronu- pronunciation and grammar might be a bit off, but I'm just saying hello, my name is Name. Ich born in England, yes, aber ich liebe Deutschland. Ooh, Ooh, that's great, that's great. <laughs> so in school, you didn't face any challenges or ever to watch more? Um, I, I feel like, because I didn't really have an accent, um, but when I came here, I couldn't, I obviously couldn't speak English properly. And my accent wasn't, it wasn't a African accent, mm-hmm. it was a German accent. So I guess people were more used to that than uh, African accent. So I didn't face that many challenges, but during secondary school is where I realized more of the, a little, just a little bit of the bullying where uh, you're, you're dark or like stuff like that. But it wasn't, I think I was already immune to it a bit just because mm-hmm. I feel like um, subconsciously, I could have faced that in Germany. I don't really remember, but I feel like some of the things that people said to me, I didn't really take any notice of just because I'm used to it, I guess. But yeah. Um, you didn't care anyway. You didn't. You don't mind because yeah. you call me black or dark or whatever. Yeah, like, you don't that's mind anymore because that's what you are. Yeah, okay. it's like saying saying I have black trousers on. Like I'm black. I can't change it. You know. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. I was coming to the bullying bit, but some of you guys mentioned bullying. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I know that um, bullying is everywhere. I think even in Africa, it could be bullying. Oh, yeah. bullying yeah. People bullying themselves. Yeah. But when you are here, you feel it. I think you feel it more. Yeah. What I want to ask and I want to know, because you guys, you guys, um, Queens went to school here. There's some Africans or the same darker skins like us. Mm. In school, do you face any challenges that some of them face you or attack you or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Mm. like certain, um, like some Africans would be like, they, I feel like they want to hold on to their roots so much to the fact that they kind of, I don't know, they want to make it a performance. I don't know, like, there's certain Mm. people Mm. they will try make it into performance. Say for instance, twerking, became popular mm. and there were certain um black girls in my class that like well oh yeah that, that would at every opportunity <laughs> would try to work yes they're like i'm black i can do this da, 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 da. like so they start to perform so again, and like, like and yeah like, and like they'll look at someone like me and i couldn't talk when i was younger so i 
like they'll look at me and then they'll be like, oh, you can't do that. Like, like, are you actually even like yeah, you you white inside? Like that, that's how they would say. Yeah, yeah. And they'll say, yeah, they'll they'll push these stereo- like my own people, like people from the same continent as me <laughs> would still still be like, oh, but you like, mean like people you from like, probably Jamaica yeah, or something like, like this or in Africa? Mm, or, yeah. Like an that, African, like, mm-hmm. I, and I'll be like, but like, why are you hating on me and saying like I'm white inside? What does that even mean? Like, it's I'm me that's my personality mm. so why are you now hating on me because i act a certain way like so um yeah they will do that and they'll do it in a joking form but then you still like hear the underlying like oh but you're not actually black though like what does like, <laughs> like being a black woman like what do, what do you mean about that like there's just a stereotype that someone else put on you. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, like, yeah. Little box yeah, you're just time. like enclosing yourself. It oh. doesn't make any sense. So yeah, I hear that a lot from like other people, like other black women, and you're like, it, it's sad because we should be like happy and embracing each other. Yeah, that's it. And, I, I like, think you should. Yeah. Have, I mean, I, I don't want to catch it. I think you guys should look after each other, mm-hmm. not ride that turn against each other, like. Um, if well, I haven't seen it. I, I see some on TV, like in London, like this. You see some of the young boys and girls will be fighting with postcode and whatever. Yeah. And did you have something like this here in school? I mean, mm, something like? like this. Like you see the um, in London, like this. There's a there's a gangs mm. that. They say you can't go to the area between blacks and blacks, yeah. stabbing themselves and all that. Yeah, like, you have something. I hear know. a lot about like light skin versus dark skin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, there's it's a lot of people that black, black, black blacks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's say, yeah. all Africans, or let's yeah. say. Mm. Mm. They're like all. They all of them are black, but mm-hmm. like there'll there'll be a lighter shade of black, or there'll be a darker <laughs> shade of black. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Because, yeah. 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 because I've never heard like white people say, "Oh, pale versus tan." Yeah. 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 If you're white, you're white. You're yeah. the same. Yeah. But with us black people, it's like, oh no, nah, babe. Yeah. She's it's light skin, or he's light skin. Mm. And we have this stereotype like, if you're light skin, you're more feminine, and if you're dark skin, then you're more masculine. Mm. So if you say light skin guy, but mm. I do like. I do witness like when people are like, oh, show your lights, can you know you're too good? Mm. And they're guys. Mm. And I'm just like, it's a bit... And it's it's kind of, it's coming from the root of, like, the light skins were Slave. preferred. Mm-hmm. Like, because they'll be in the house more because they look closer mm-hmm. to the white people. Mm-hmm. So, like, the light skins were preferred because it's, you know, yeah, they, they seem that. more yeah. beautiful and, like... I understand that, it's like, I want... Like our time right now, mm-hmm. shouldn't we be open? Yeah, that? I don't know. But it's yeah. like some people use it as an excuse. Oh, it's just my preference. It's just my preference. I hate. That. I hate that word because preference is like. You like one thing, but you like something more mm-hmm. than that. So like, oh, I might like apples, but I like orange a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But when you say preference, you know, you mean, oh, I only like this type. Mm-hmm. You don't like this type. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And it's just like... For me, yeah. it's not about a preference. It's not you, can ha- you can choose what you want. Mm-hmm. It's not it's just when you bring the other one down, down. Yes. Yes. and then you bring your yeah. one up yeah. in like a pedestal mm-hmm. and you say, oh, yeah. this one's better than that. That's my only problem with it. But I also like, I feel like the terminology needs to, use, like, it needs to be used correctly. Yeah. Because it just, it sounds a bit dumb in a way because, you know, you, you you're allowed to have a preference. Yeah. 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 But if you don't like someone, just say, oh, I don't like this person. But don't say it's my preference. And if you don't like them, that's fine. But don't insult them. Don't say, oh, I only like light skin because dark skin is loud. Or you hear some people say, oh, I only like white girls because black girls are wretched. Mm. It's like, and then if the, someone try and say something. people that say anything? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that yeah. 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 that was saying. And if you yeah. say anything, it's going to be like, oh, shut up, you just judge. It's my preference. I'm like, it's not your yeah. preference, babe. Yeah. At this point, it's an excuse. It's, it's an excuse. Yeah. And if you, like, try and talk about it, like, more than they start blaming the white man. Oh, no, but it's slavery, it's slavery. You know, I can't help myself, I can't help myself. Mm-hmm. Like, but you can't, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's true. Um, you? Do you have anything to add to it? Oh, about the... Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. We're talking about bullying, but it's... No. Nice <laughs> all this, it's uh, so, I mean, it, it's yeah. nice to say what you know and mm. what you have experienced. Um, I think within the black community, there is a lot of, like... Mm. 
not necessarily prejudice, but colorism. like colorism and like certain black people think they're better than others. Mm, like that for example, I feel like if a black person was born here mm. and raised here, they'll think they're better than the one that came from Africa. Because they'll Jamaica, be like, oh, yeah. Because well, um, mm. yeah. mm. I do remember in high school when there was a guy that came from Africa, mm. everyone was like, oh, he's a freshie, like, mm. he has an accent, yeah. he has that mm. look. Yeah. Like, Lick was another yeah, thing. like they'll make fun of them, even though they're black, but just because they're from Africa yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're fresh off the boat.